welcome back to our channel the bon bon v aka the good good life it's your girl nuri and i am back at it again with yet another video first of all before i get into it i just want to say why do i say our channel right i say our channel because one i love the communication that i have with the people that are subscribed to this channel it feels like we are sharing ideas with each other especially when i'm on live especially when i am doing bible study you know, you guys share with me your scriptures and you give me your opinions. And I love that we share each other's opinions. And I feel like we are growing this channel together. We are doing it together. We're learning together. We're developing together, especially me as a baby Christian. You know, I just got saved in 2023. So walking with Christ has been such a, an amazing thing for me and it's just something that I genuinely enjoy doing. So being in a in a space where my subscribers also have that same passion is just so amazing to me. But um today <laughs> let me get into the video. So today today's video is so important because in 2024 we're leave, we're living in a time where fornication, adultery, lust, all of these things are normal. It's a common thing. It's a common place to say, hey, I'm going to be in a relationship with someone, but before I get married to them, I want to test the waters. I want to see how, you know, things are with this person if I'm going to, you know, enjoy fornicating with them, right? And so it is very important to understand that fornication is not a sin for any, just any reason. It's not that God doesn't want you to have fun or enjoy life because fornication is, um, uh, uh, not fornication, but intercourse is something that God created for a husband and wife. It, it is created for a reason. It is supposed to be enjoyable for a reason because God told us to come to this world to be fruitful and multiply. So it's not that God does not want us to do the act. He just doesn't want us to do the act with just anybody. And I'm going to delve into it. Um, before I do that, I want to tell you guys why lust is one of those sins that is so different and just a lot more painful than, <laughs> than it should be. It's because if you go to 1 Corinthians Six verse 18 okay so I'm gonna go to first Corinthians 6 verse 18 it says flee fornication every sin that a man doeth is without the body but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body what Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God and you are not of your own? Listen, <laughs> it is telling you that one, your body is a temple, right? The Holy Ghost resides in you and it's a temple of God. It is a mobile temple. You are you know, wherever you go, the Holy Spirit is within you because you are a temple, right? But outside of that, your body is not your own. And you understand that fornicating is the only sin where you are defiling the temple of God. You are essentially defiling the temple of God. And let me tell you guys something. I know it's 2024. You guys do not want to have this conversation. You don't want to talk about how... It is a sin to fornicate because it's it's a common thing. People don't want to talk about these things because it's something that they enjoy doing. So they always turn the other cheek. Like, yes, I'll do everything else. You know, I'll follow God in every, every other way. But with fornication, this is something normal. I can't have a boyfriend without or a girlfriend without doing these things. You know, I, I, um, I have a friend who... You know, re just a, a few years ago, lost her virginity because she was having a hard time with dating and finding somebody that would um, accept her as a virgin. But 
she didn't, she should have, I don't want to say what she should have done. I'm just going to keep it like that. But there are people, men and women, that are willing to abstain from that. That are willing to follow the walk laws of Christ. You yourself are supposed to be a walking example of what you should be like. Just like how Jesus, when he came to earth, was a walking example of what everyone should aspire to be like. That's essentially what we should be doing. But I digress. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to go over James 1, verse 14 to 15. And so James 1, verse 14 to 15. And so it says, every man is tempted, but when he is drawn, oh, I'm so sorry. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust had conceived it, it bringeth forth sin and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So I'll say this. This verse is kind of alluding to what I'm going to talk about later on, which is that fornication, fornication opens the doors for other sins. It opens the door for many other things that you should not be doing as not just as a, as a Christian, but as anyone that's living on earth, because I'm telling you, it would lead to sin. And of course, sin leads to death. Okay. So I'm going to go again to first Peter two verse 11. And I'm looking at my notes. If I keep looking down, I'm looking at my notes. I have so many notes and I'm looking at my phone for, um, the Bible verses. So I'm going to go to first Peter two verse 11. First Peter, the first Peter two verse 11 says, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims as abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. It wars against your soul. One thing you have to understand is we have three enemies in this, uh, in this world. We have the devil. We have the world and we have our flesh and this verse is saying your flesh wars against your soul because you your soul is is so there are three parts of you there's your mind i mean not your mind your soul your flesh and your spirit your spirit when you pass away goes back to god which is is god's spirit your body stays on earth and perishes your soul is what gets judged and your soul wants to make it to heaven but it's saying here that your fleshly lust wars against your soul because it wants your soul lust is never satisfied it wants your soul and your soul wants to make it to heaven but because you are lusting, it's going to have a hold on you. If you go after that lust, if you pursue it and you keep going deeper, one thing about sin is that once you start, it will keep building up and building up and building up until, you know, it keeps opening those doors. And when you open those doors, you're allowing legal access to spirits to enter it. One thing about the spiritual realm is they work on legalities. They are that, you know, they, they need legal rights to enter your body, to, to possess you. Or I don't want to say possess, it's not a, a good term, but to, um, to use you, to enter you and you to, for you to become a, a demonic host. And in order for them to have that access to you, they tempt you, right? You get tempted. The devil tempts you. So the, the reason you get tempted is so that you can sin. And what, what happens when you sin is you open that door, that legal access, the legal right for the demons to come into you, to come and harass you and to come and attack your life and your destiny. So <laughs> lusting opens the door for sin, right? And the sinning leads to death, right? So... I'm going to 
I'm going to talk more about sinless that leads to death. So if you go to 1 John 2, verse 15 and 17, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? If you're, if the love of your father is not in you, you are opening yourself to demonic attack. That is, and you're opening, if you turn your back on God, you cause the love of God to not enter you. And if the God is, if the love of God is not in you, you don't have the protection of God, which leaves you vulnerable to the devil. Remember the devil walks around, roams the earth like a lion, like a roaring lion seeking who to devour. This is exactly why it's important to stay away from certain sins. No, not even certain sins. To stay away from sin, period. Because sin opens the door. It opens the gate. It opens the flood to just rush through to cause the demons to attack you in any way they can. And so, okay, so that was verse 15. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay? You're following lust. Lust is of the flesh. The flesh does not last forever. Remember what I said. It's your spirit, your soul, and your flesh. Your flesh will die. What's left over? Your spirit and your soul. Your spirit goes back to God. Your soul is the one that will be in damnation, eternal damnation. You have to understand, you, while you're here on earth, you're working towards entering the kingdom. That's your goal. Right now on earth, your goal is to follow the, the follow God's will so that you can enter the kingdom. <laughs> That's essentially all it is, right? And so, it, it, this verse is telling you, if you follow your fleshly desires... You are going to perish with the world. The world is not going to be forever. The world is not, this earth that we're staying in, it's not going to be forever. And God is telling you, hey, listen, you can follow the fleshly desires, but just know that it's going to lead to death, eternal damnation. So if you go to, okay, so first Colossians 3 verse 4 to 6, 5 to 6, that kind of reiterates that a little bit. Not first Colossians, just Colossians 5 to 6. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil con- concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. He's saying these things, including fornication, is idolatry and idolatry remember remember god is a jealous god it is going to bring forth the wrath of god you are and you know that is not even something that i even dug deep into but fornication is idolatry and what why is it idolatry when you do things that oppose god because you have this fleshly desire that it is it you are willing to overlook the ordinances of God, overlook what God has told you to do, then in that case, you are idolizing this thing because you believe that it is more important than what God says for you to do. You, It's more important than God. So you are idolizing it, knowing that fornication is, is wrong, but you decide that you want to do it. It's idolatry, and idolatry brings forth the wrath of God. You have seen it. So many times in the Old Testament when the when the Israelites have worshipped false idols and that brought the wrath of God, God turned his back on them, you know? And anyway, I'm also going to go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, oh, I already read that. So um, 1 Corinthians uh, 19 to 18 is talking about the body being uh, um, bought at a price. Your body was bought at a, at a price. It is not yours. And for you to sin against your body, <laughs> you know, you're, che- you're first of all, you're cheating yourself. You're cheapening yourself. And 
you're losing your own value. Your body was bought at a price. So why are you selling yourself short by fornicating? Romans 8 verse 6. If you go to Romans 8 verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you're living a carnal mind or a carnal life, meaning you're living a fleshly life, it's death. You have to live in the spirit. If you, it's essential. And the thing about living in the spirit is it's not easy for people that have lived in the flesh their whole, their whole life. But once you start living in the spirit, these fleshly desires start to dissipate. You have no interest in any of these things. It becomes so much easier for you to say, for you to say, I have no interest in doing these things. And if you're living in the world and you are of the world, and you have no idea about the spirit, you will feel tempted. And, and of course, just because you're living in the spirit doesn't mean you're not going to get tempted, but the temptation living in the flesh is so much stronger because your viewpoint, the things that you desire align with the flesh. So these temptations <laughs> become so much more challenging. You know what I mean? But once you start living in the fle- in the spirit, these temptations, you will think twice before doing it. It would be like, mm, I don't know if that's, this is a good idea. I don't think I'm interested in doing this. Um, but yeah. And so I'm going to say one more thing about, uh, about lust. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to go into the consequences of lust. And let me tell you, my notes on this are incredible. The consequences of lust. I, I'm trying to figure out where to begin. First of all, all right. Before I even go into the consequences, let me talk about how lust can be. You know, it can 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 cause these doors to open. Right. We're talking about corn, right? You're lusting with your eyes. I have heard of count countless experiences where people talk about how when they scroll through something and they go to somebody's Instagram page and that page is filled with lust, right? Somebody, I remember it was a guy on YouTube that was talking about how he felt a demon enter into his room just because his eyes had seen that. Remember, your eyes are the window to your soul, you know? And also faith, when you hear the, the verse, faith comes by hearing, your ears and your eyes can cause things to happen in the spiritual realm. The things that you allow to enter into your ears and the things that you allow to, allow to enter into your eyes, those can open the door for things to enter into your life. And watching corn um, can cause that. It can cause a spiritual attack. It can cause demons to attack you and enter into your life and cause you to commit adultery or fornication. Because you are you 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 have this vision of what you think something should be like. And you are, anyway, I don't want to get too deep into that. Um, but let's, let's jump into the, the experiences of lust and how it can affect you. Let's talk about that. So I'm going to give examples in the Bible first, right? <clears throat> let's talk about King Herod. I'm going to go to Mark 6 verse 22. Mark 6, verse 22. So Mark 6, verse 22. This is King Herod. And King Herod basically had John the Baptist imprisoned at the time. This is when 
um, John the Baptist was doing all his preaching and he made a lot of people upset, including King Herod. And so when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod, and then that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it to thee. And he sware unto her, whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give to thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in straight away with haste unto the king and said, and, and asked saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger, the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry yet for his oath sake and for the sake, for their sakes, which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. Listen, this man gave an oath to a woman, not knowing her, but just because she was so beautiful, he saw her dancing, prancing around. He decided that he wanted to give her an oath and say, anything you want, I will give it to you. Let me know. And she asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter. He didn't want to do it and he felt bad about it. But because he made that oath, he made that promise, he couldn't back down. And he gave her exactly what she asked. He gave her exactly what she asked. Because of her beauty, he was, he was blinded by her lust. Someone he didn't even know. So that's one example. Okay, I'm gonna go to Proverbs 11 verse six. And what is what what does that say about lust? The righteous of uh, the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Right. So basically, I'm gonna give you another um, interpretation, another. Bible verse. It says the righteousness of the up. This is the King, the new King James version. I was reading the King James version. So now I'm reading the new King James version. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. So the righteousness, you're living a righteous life. You are going to be delivered. But if you are lustful living, <laughs> living a lustful fleshly world, fleshly life, you'll be caught by that lust. That lust will catch you. And that's exactly what happened here with, with King Herod. But that is one minor example. Let's talk about, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about King David and Bathsheba. First, second Samuel 11. And I don't, I, I, matter of fact, I don't even think I want to read that whole thing, but second Samuel 11 talks about King David seeing Bathsheba taking a shower First, that, that's where the first part came in, the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes, he said, who is this woman? Who is this beautiful woman? They told him, she is the wife of Uriah, one of your um, soldiers, right? I think he was a commander in his army. And, and then King David said, oh, wow, I, I need this woman. I need her. Slept with the woman, got her pregnant, tried to pin the pregnancy on her husband, Uriah, but Uriah didn't want to sleep with her because he was like, if my brother, my brethren is at war, at war, why would I be sleeping with my wife right now? Ended up because he was a righteous man. Let me tell you the name Uriah. I'm going to tell you what it means. Uriah. Uriah means flame of God. This was a righteous man. And this man had the, the, the flame of God within him. And, and David decided to have this man at the forefront of the war of battle to, because he knew that he would be, if he did that, he placed him in the forefront. He had that man murdered. 
because he wanted to take this man's wife. So now, what was the consequence of that? What was the consequence of that? Let's go to do do do. Second Samuel twelve verse nine to sixteen. The consequence of that, I don't know if I should read the whole thing. It's kind of long, but. <clears throat> so there was a um, a seer or a prophet that came to him and said, Wherefore thou ha- hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Right now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house and I will take thy wives by thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with her, will lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. For thou didst, it, did it secretly but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it because thou this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto the house. So, <laughs> multiple things happened in this case. Not only did David sin with lust and um, not just fornication, but adultery. He had this man killed. Not only that, then he, <laughs> then now that he did all of that, he caused the child, his child, the child that, was caused from uh, the uh, adultery. Now the child is going to be sick and, and go on to heaven because of this sin that he had committed, committed. And that is a form of trauma that happened in this entire thing, because now you have trauma in the family because you caused, you caused your wives and concubines to be, uh, I don't even want to say the word before I get blocked on this uh, YouTube, but to be, um, as aid by somebody, by somebody, just because you want to commit something so heinous. Now you have caused trauma to your wives and concubines. You have caused death in a family. And now it is, All of this is because of one lustful desire that you had when you saw this woman when she was taking the bath. Okay, let me see. Okay, I have a few more. I have a few more minutes on this camera because, you know, (laughs) the battery's about to die. So, so that's one form of trauma. Another form of trauma that happened with this was lust led to SA revolt again in the bloodline of of David when David's own son essayed his daughter Tamar. So Amnon, Tamar's half-brother, essayed her because he lusted after her. He was so lustful towards her. It wasn't even that he was in love. He had such a huge desire to be with this woman that he essayed her. And then after committing such heinous crime, he discarded her. He didn't want to marry her. He, he hated her. He genuinely hated her after committing such a crime, such a heinous act. And because of that, her brother Absalom was like, oh no, I'm not going to let this slide. He went off, offed Amnon and then ran away. But in the process, Amnon, uh, I mean, Absalom caused a whole revolt against his father, David. And this revolt led to Absalom 
and his sons to be oft. And all of this started because this man, Amnon, lusted after his own sister. So you see how, how lust opens the door for so many things. I'm going to get, I'm going to give you, should I give you another example? I have so many examples on here. We can talk about, um, King Solomon and his concubines, how King Solomon was doing right in the sight of God, but chose to marry many, many (laughs) hundreds, he had over a thousand wives all outside of Israel, all outside of, or not all, but most of them were outside of, because God said you cannot marry outside of Israel because these other people serve other gods, the Gentiles, they serve other gods. And I don't want you to be influenced by that. That's the reason why God didn't want them to marry outside of Israel because he didn't want them to be influenced by their other gods. Well, Solomon, who is the wisest man, the wisest man in the Bible, the why God gave him so much wisdom. He was the wisest king of Israel. And this man succumbed to lust. And that was his downfall because he was doing everything pleasing in the sight of God until he ended up worshiping Baal, creating temples on behalf of Baal and doing all these things that made God angry at him. This caused the division between Judah and, um, I'm sorry, between Judah and Israel. Because God was like, you know, why would you do this? I gave you this gift of wisdom and you, you do something like this. Let me think of another example. Samson, Samson, he was going around, sleeping around everybody, any, everybody. And this man ended up meeting Delilah. She's not his wife. She's not his girl. (laughs) No, they didn't have girlfriends back then, but she was just someone that he was messing around with. And this lady kept asking him, what is the source of your strength? And instead of this guy to just, cause she had, he had told her, gave her so many different lies. And each time she would call the Philistines to come and attack him. But he should have known, I don't know what it was that was blinding this man. Maybe she was so beautiful, but she kept asking him. And each time he kept telling her, finally, he got tired of her asking him. He told her the source of my strength is my hair. They cut his hair and they caught him all because of lust, all because of his lustful desire. So you can see, I don't want to keep going deep into it, but you can see time and time and time again, how lust has been a major factor in people's downfall and big major Kings, King David being the greatest King, his son, King Solomon after him. And they fell because of lust. Okay. So I don't think I have too much time because my camera is about to give up, but I want to talk about, let me see what is the most important thing to talk about. And I might have to do a part two. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Matter of fact, I will do a part two. I'll do a part two to talk about how to overcome this. And it's going to be a very short part too, because it's going to talk about scriptures. Okay. <laughs> it's going to talk about scriptures in the Bible that, um, that talks about what to do to overcome lust. Okay. But I'm going to tell you about how lust opens the door. So I've already talked about the spiritual realm, um, dealing with legalities. When you are lustful. When you have lustful eyes, you open the door for lustful desires to come to pass. So you open that door for fornication to come in. When fornication comes in, you open the doors to so many things. I don't know if you guys know this, but so not even, I don't know if you guys know this, you have seen in this example, there are three things, right? It causes you to have blinded blinders over your eyes and you can't think straight. You start to do things that it impairs your more moral judgment. 
impairs your moral judgment. And so you make decisions that are not aligned with the will of God, right? And so that's one. So you know that it impairs your mo- your moral judgment. So with that, when you don't fornicate, your eyes are so clear that you can see people's actions. You can you're so like vigilant to see what people are doing, why they're doing the things that you're not blinded by lust because lust can be very blinding. You start to overlook red flags. You start to overlook things that should not be, be accepted because you are blinded by lust. You, you, you lose moral judgment. It also allows for bad influence in your life. Like I was mentioning about King Solomon and King David, mostly King Solomon, because King Solomon was with women that were not, that's worshiped other gods. And because of that, they allowed, they influenced him to start worshiping other gods. Okay. It opened the door for that. But one of the things that I will talk about, uh, if I have enough time is soul ties. Okay. Soul ties. First, I want to talk about soul ties with Jonathan and David. So Jonathan and David, they, they, it, they weren't doing anything sexual, lustful, but there, there's that good aspect of, um, a soul connection that shows that a soul connection is a thing. So if I go to first Samuel 18, verse one, it says, and it came to pass when he made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. They loved each other like one. They were so their kindred spirits. That is a form of soul tie in a good way, right? These people, they were great friends, but now let's talk about Soul tie, soul ties. Okay, we'll, talk, we'll go to First Corinthians six, verse sixteen. First Corinthians six, verse sixteen, and it says, "Oh wait, I already talked about that." Mm, is that what it is? No, I've already talked about that. Okay. Um, Genesis, I'm sorry, two verse 24. Okay. So Genesis two verse 24 says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So if a man is with his wife, they are cleaving onto each other like they're one flesh, right? Whatever you do, I do. They, 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 they are one flesh. Their soul are con- their soul is connected. But I also want to talk about the S A of Dinah, the daughter of jo- uh, of Jacob. That's in Genesis thirty four, verse one to three. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hittite prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. So he had a lustful desire towards her. He lusted after her. He took her by force. And then his soul clicked cleaved to her. And so he loved her. He had a soul connection. He had a soul tie with this woman after he did what he did to her causing a form of trauma, but that's neither here nor there. But, um, anyway, so that's all I had to say, you know, uh, I'm going to make a part two to talk about how to overcome this, um, fleshly desire and why it is important to overcome this fleshly desire. So, uh, I hope this video did something for you. I pray, you know, let me pray really quickly. You know, Lord, thank you so much for gathering everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now. I pray Lord that you open their heart and their eyes and their ears to be able to receive this message so that it can do something to their spirit so they can be, um, convicted 
in a good way, to not fornicate, to stay away from lustful desires, um, and to not be oppressed by the by the 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 way the world is right now in 2024. Lord, I pray that you protect them in all of their ways and and keep them from their lustful desires. Okay. Thank you so much, God, for answering our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you for staying this long. I love you. And remember, God loves you even more.